Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today I want to talk about how sometimes you give advice to others that you don't really follow yourself even though you really know you should. This is me when it comes to not finishing books, also known as DNFing. This is how it usually goes. Hi, it's me, your imaginary friend. Um, okay, just go along with this, right? You can call me, um, Chloe. Okay, um, Chloe, how can I help you? I am so glad you asked. I've been reading this book. I'm only 73 pages in, which is only about 21% of the whole book. But I really don't like it. The characters are awful, the plot is so dull, the writing is terrible, and every sentence feels like a paper cut to the brain. Ah yes, Wuthering Heights, been there, done that. No, 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 it's, it's not Wuthering Heights, it's um something else. Anyway, I keep torturing myself with this book. I have nightmares about it. I dread the moment that I have to pick it up and read it. It's giving me headaches. What should I do? Well, that sounds like a clear-cut case of do not finish. Drop the book, put it away and read something you actually enjoy. Life's too short to spend on books you don't like when there are so many that you know you'll love. Reading is supposed to make you happy and if what you're reading isn't doing that, then it's time to give up and move on to another book that might. Why thanks, Claudia, that's exactly what I'm going to do. You are such a good friend. Well, she's happy, but would I ever take my own advice in that situation? I think you know the answer to that. Today, I want to talk about DNFing and my own complicated relationship with it. This video was inspired by the DNF tag, which was originally created by Gunpowder Fiction and Plod, and I was kindly tagged by Hannah from Hannah's Books. I won't be going through the questions in this tag one by one, and that's because I've been wanting to discuss the topic of DNFing in a video for a while, and uh, this discussion video structure just works better than a tag for me. But check the description box for links to the original tag as well as Hannah's video. Back to me being a terrible person at taking my own advice. I'll be forcing myself to read a book that I hate, knowing it's not going to get better in the next hundred pages, knowing that it's going to take me a long time to get through this book, simply because I can't stand to look at it for more than 10 minutes at a time, and still I will torture myself with it. Why? Because, and I hope you're paying attention to this exceptionally rational piece of wisdom, I've started it, I might as well finish it. What I've just described with regards to my own really not very clever approach to DNFing is known as the sunk cost fallacy, a term you might be familiar with from economics. The idea is that when people feel like they have invested something, whether that's time, money, energy, emotions or other resources, that something is worth pursuing to the end. It's a fallacy because what we perceive as logical, the whole I started it, I might as well finish it idea, isn't actually the most rational way to proceed. I have spent money on this book, I've kept it on my shelf for months, I've talked about it in a TBR video, I've taken an aesthetically pleasing picture from my Instagram, I've read the first hundred pages, so I might as well finish it. When I take a step back from my own life and imagine a friend struggling with a bad book, it's much easier to see that the right course of action would be to put the book down and pick up another one. So why do I struggle so much with taking that advice myself? To be fair to myself, I should say that I have gotten better at DNFing in recent years. This started pretty much when I joined Booktube and I saw that other people did not have these weird hang-ups about not finishing books. Since making my Goodreads account a few years ago, I have read 300 books and DNF'd 9. That's not a lot, that is a DNF rate of just under 3%. Which of course does not mean that I enjoyed 97% of the books that I picked up. If I had DNF'd every book I disliked, say 100 pages in, I would probably have a DNF rate closer to 20%. Too many times have I forced myself to the end of a book without any enjoyment. And when I got there to the last chapter, the last sentence, the last word, I have never felt that it was worth it. 
And that's the defining thing that makes never DNFing a book a problem for some and not for others. I'm sure there are some people watching this video who never DNF books and are fine with it. Who get a sense of accomplishment or a sense of completion out of finishing a book they don't like. There are people watching this video who fall in love with books very slowly, who learn to enjoy a book only two or three hundred pages in, and by the time they get to the end, it's a new favourite. But that's not really me. Generally speaking, if I'm, say, a quarter into the book and I still hate it, the book will not win me over. There is, of course, a difference between, eh, not really feeling this book, and I hate it, I hate it, I hate every word of it, what a waste of paper and ink. Just to be clear, I am talking about the second sentiment. If a book is so awful that I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy, who, by the way, at the time of recording is this man, then I really don't get anything out of finishing that book. So my ongoing project is to get better at DNFing books that just aren't worth it. I need to treat myself as kindly as I would treat a friend and not give in to the sunk cost fallacy. I need to remind myself of the millions of books that are out there in the world that I'll never get to read and that deserve my time and attention more than the one I'm currently struggling with. So let me know how you are with DNFing. Are you in favour or not? Or are you a filthy hypocrite like me? Also, make sure to check the DNF tag videos linked down below for lots more discussion and opinions on this topic. Thank you for watching. Bye.